You want me to go back to the States? Uh, yep. The day Debbie lands in Morocco, Usama drops a bombshell. He tells this woman, who has uprooted her life to live there indefinitely, that in one or two months, he wants her to leave. Just like that. Ah, uh, yep. I'm trying to keep it together without wringing his neck. Plus, Gabe comes out as trans to his friend Trey after a year of knowing each other. And Trey's reaction, it's something to see. I'm trans, so I was like born a girl. Whoa, what the f Let's get into it. Hey, 90 Day Fans fam, it's Melicia. I hope you're doing well. Let's go ahead and get into Debbie and Usama. At the top of the episode, Miss Debbie just arrived in Morocco and she is on cloud nine, honey. And I feel like I'm home and that everything's gonna be okay. Your feelings are valid, Debbie, but that does not mean they are true. Can I get an amen? Osama and I plan to stay a couple of days in the capital city of Rabat, and then we're gonna go meet mom and dad in Kemeset. Debbie thinks that after she meets Osama's parents, she and Osama will get married and return to the capital city and get an apartment, which, as we're about to learn, is not Osama's plan. But before we get to that, Debbie asks Osama what his expectations are from her when she becomes his wife. First, like, I want you like to be like half a Moroccan woman. Half of a Moroccan woman? woman like uh, cooking food at home, cleaning my, my clothes. Yeah. Something like this. Yeah, like traditional roles. Traditional, yeah. It's just something about him telling her that that makes it seem as if he's just looking for another mom. But can we really be surprised? No. Osama didn't mention anything about romance, faithfulness, affection, spending time together. It was just about Debbie's duties. Now, I know men from different cultures have different expectations, but at the age of 67, I don't think Debbie came to Morocco to work. I've yep. worked hard my whole life, yep, Osama. I know, I know. I was waiting on Usama to return the question to Debbie and ask her what she expects from him as a husband. That didn't happen. Why, Osama, at this time, are you saying I need to become half of a Moroccan woman? You weren't telling me that stuff before. It's like Debbie was good and fine and dandy for you, but now it's like learning how to cook and clean the Moroccan way. I need to be half a Moroccan woman. This was never a part of the plan. You know, I don't know what I'm getting myself into in Chemiset. Whew, I need a drink just thinking about it. <laughs> Why is she so cute? We just have to make better decisions when it comes to love, Miss Debbie. <laughs> Fast forward, Usama takes Debbie to this romantic hotel. Hi. Hi, how are you? How are you? I'm doing yeah. Where the reservation is in her name. <laughs> what? <laughs> it was in her name. That's all I said. Uh, do you have reservations? Uh, yep, uh, Debbie wants to have a reservation, yep. Okay. Mm, two, two rooms, rooms please. please. Okay, yeah. no problem. Double the trouble. Double the yeah. trouble, yeah. <laughs> Uh, here in Morocco, me and DB, we need to sleep like different rooms till we get married, because it's a law here. That's fine and dandy with Miss Debbie. I mean, we're already like, you know, overwhelmed with seeing each other and our ideas and our plans. I don't need that. Debbie said, I don't need that stress. Give me my space. When I spoke to her a few weeks ago, I asked if she and Usama get intimate, and she kind of beat around the bush. <laughs> no pun intended. Out of line. Uh, Osama has tried, you know, it's like, he, he's, he's a red-blooded man, it's like, he's tried, but when I say no, guess what? He respects me. And then he's very romantic. You know, most guys, you know, it's all about grabbing and whatever, and it's like, you know, it's like, yeah, Osama has his moments, but he knows when no means no, and then he goes back to being the gentleman. Yeah. That sounds like a no. 
And let's be real, Usama is 24. If he's not sleeping with someone else now, eventually he will. This is it tonight. This is my first day in Morocco. Wow, what a necklace. Are you with me, lions? Anyway, once Debbie and Osama get settled at the hotel, they decide to meet in the courtyard so Debbie can get clear on how long Osama plans to stay with his mom and dad, AKA. There's some is about to go down. You know, I didn't give up my whole life in the United States and my comfort zone you know, to live with mom and dad for an indefinite period of time. Y'all, it looks so nice. You like my princess yep. dress? This is nice. Yeah. How are you, kind sir, this evening? I feel very tired, but you know, sis have some energy. As you can see, Debbie is pretty wrapped up in this fairy tale idea. Which makes you feel for her even more after what comes next. She asks Usama how long she should prepare to stay at his parents' house. A few days? A week? This was his answer. For me, you can stay all the time you want. You can stay one month in home, two months. All the time she wants? That sounds like the time you want. Uh-uh, you see how he tried to put it on her? That's sneaky. For me, you can stay all the time you want. You can stay one month in home, two months. Also, it's no point in even asking why this conversation wasn't had before she moved across the world. For some reason, those conversations are rare on 90 Day. Okay, I need kind of a time frame because, okay, once we go to mom and dad's and then we need to like start looking at apartments in Rabat too. For the apartments? I think we need to save some money because it will, it will be expensive for us here. For now, I mean, we can stay in my father's home. Wait, how are you going to tell her how to spend her money? Y'all need to save. How about you consider working? How about that? It's like he's trying to mask what he really wants with words that sound as if he's being considerate of her. In this moment, you can tell. Debbie is getting a feeling that something is wrong. She's trying to keep that smile up, but disappointment is tapping at that heart. You know the feeling, that initial stomach drop. Oof. As you will stay here like a two months or one month, and after you will leave to the US. Because I know that you will come back for your business, for your home, you know, for something important. Right. I'm kind of confused at the point. It's like, you say I'm going to be here two months at your mom and dad's house, and then you want me to go back to the States? Ah, uh, yep. <laughs> you want me to go back to the States? Ah, uh, yep. And then I'm, when do I come back again? Well, I think just, yeah, I mean. Come back when, when? Debbie said, we are not about to play these games. Speak. Come back when, when? This is a decision of life. First, you have to know my family, how they are, how they live, the tradition. I never I mean, spend like uh, two months with you in the same house. I mean, we have to know each other so deeply. And after we will get married. Wow, Osama, I wish you would have told me that before I, I came. Right. Thankfully, Debbie didn't hold in what she really wanted to say, like some of us do, and then we go home and beat ourselves up for all the things we should have said. But no, Debbie speaks up, and she lets Osama know this is a disappointment, and specifically, I'm disappointed in you. Here's the deal, Osama. I moved mountains to come over here. I hurt my kids. I had expectations and I believed your word to me that you loved me and we were to get married. And now you're, you're telling me you're not going to marry me and this is a two month test drive? Whew, I thought we were gonna hear another yep. Ah, uh, yep. 
I would have wanted to jump through the screen for Debbie. I need to live with you in reality to see if you accept me in reality, if me accept you in reality. Well, why couldn't you tell me, gee, Debbie, why don't you come and I'll see if I can accept you in reality or not? Why didn't you say something like that? Because if I say to you this, he wouldn't just come. Hmm. Let's call that what it is. That's manipulation. Now, let me be clear. I'm actually for Usama and Debbie not getting married. What I'm against is any person who sells someone a dream and then when they get you where they want you, they tell you it's time to live in reality. It's, it's, it's gaslighting. Um. That term is so overused and misused at times, but in this case, it fits. I know some of you might say, well, what does Debbie expect? She's dealing with a 24 year old. I personally don't think this is an age thing. There are some extremely intelligent, considerate and wise 24 year olds. This is more of a character issue, a lack of integrity on Usama's part. And with everything that Debbie has to lose, it's dangerous. Well, how do you think I feel now? How, what, what do you think it's like to be sitting over here looking like a fool? Usama is looking like he's about to go to sleep. <laughs> he did say he was tired. Why didn't you say, Debbie, don't pack all your stuff? Why didn't you say, Debbie, slow down? Yes, because you know, if things go good, as we will, we will get married, indeed. You really screwed up big time, Osama. Why? It's like shame on you. Why? Shout out to Beyonce's song, Resentment. Oof, that used to be my jam. You lied because to me. Because I'm still, I'm still wanting to marry you. You know what? I don't believe you anymore. I still you, love you as, you as the first time. I mean, there is nothing changed in our love. I don't believe you. I'm using a tremendous amount of self-control. I'm trying to keep it together without wringing his neck. Debbie shares that when she was in Morocco last year, Usama was eager to get married. And for some reason, all of that's changed now. It's a concern Debbie opened up to me about too. Then I started to feel bad. I said, well, maybe I gained 20 pounds. Maybe he thinks I look fat. Then I said to myself, maybe he's got a young girlfriend. And if he does, let me know because I let you go in a heartbeat. I want you to be happy. You know, I'm not some lecherous old lady looking to sink my claws into him. It's a, I want you to be happy and good in life. That's all I want. If I'm not your cup of tea, hey, I'm not gonna force you. Back to the episode, Debbie tells Usama that she's lost her confidence in him. My expectations were you were gonna man up. And now all of a sudden you've changed your mind. A man's word is supposed to mean something. Say that again, Debbie. A man's word is supposed to mean something. Obviously, I didn't know you as well as I thought. I feel sick, man. Oh, Debbie in her princess dress returned to her quarters. And who she thought was her prince is looking more like a villain right now. Seriously, what's up with the look, Usama? Interesting. Recently, I came across this tweet that I love. And after watching Debbie and Usama this week, it made me think of her. It reads, quote, nothing is as beautiful as seeing someone who has been unlucky in relationships finally being loved effortlessly by the right person. Debbie just wants her fairy tale ending. And after all that she's been through, including two failed marriages, one that resulted in her locking herself in the house for 12 years. I want that happy ending for her too. And to be frank, I don't think it's with Usama. Bless his heart. You know, my pool for, for finding a nice man is very small. Actually, it's a little mud puddle. It's not even a pool. What would be cool is if the 90 Day franchise created a wholesome dating show for cast members like Debbie, bring on some therapists and relationship experts, and some nice older single men who would truly be a good match for her. Sometimes our life experiences can cause our picker to be off when looking for love. And all we need is some extra help and guidance. I think Debbie can use some of that extra help. But 
All of this is wishful thinking for the time being because Debbie has not ended her relationship with Usama yet. I don't even know if that's gonna happen. We'll have to wait and see what the season holds. All right, moving on. I have to show you this moment where we see Gabe come out to his friend Trey as trans. They've been buddies for a year. And I have a little insight on how Gabe handles these combos. Here's what he told me last month. I think in important times in my life or events in my life, then yeah, I tell people, but on the daily, on the regular, even like in a year, I really don't feel the pressure to tell people. If it's not pertinent to what's happening right now, I don't feel like I need to tell people. So knowing that, it was interesting to watch him decide it's time to tell Trey. How you doing, man? Hey, man, buy some hoops. You ready? Yeah. Gabe and his friend Trey, who is also American but lives in Colombia, are playing basketball. We hang out all the time. Um, he's a cool guy. And Gabe tells Trey he wants to propose to Isabel. Are you sure you want to get into this? I'm already, I feel like I'm already in it. I feel like I'm already invested. Like, I've already jumped in the deep end with no floaties. I think that Gabe is jumping into this a little bit too quick. He's found somebody that he truly thinks that he loves, but on the other hand, do I know Gabe to be impulsive? Absolutely. Dang, Gabe's sister said the same thing. He has a tendency to jump the gun and rush into things. It can get exhausting. All right, fast forward, Gabe starts to talk about how he is going to go the traditional route and ask Isabel's dad for her hand in marriage. And that's when he drops the news. I have to reveal something else to them also. What's that? I'm trans. So I was like born a girl. Wait, we have to take a look again at how Trey looked Gabe up and down in pure shock. I'm trans. So I was like born a girl. Whoa, what the Trey is reacting like he's getting punked. Whoa, what the Is it okay to laugh? His reaction's hilarious to me. And it's cool how ultimately he doesn't care. Damn. Yep. So that's why oh, I never added you on any no. of my social media. Oh, that's all good, man. You're worried about me? Mine, though, no, so now I can add you. <laughs> For sure. Let's go, yeah. I had no idea that Gabe is trans. I mean, he plays football. You know what I'm saying? He's a running back on the football team out here. So honestly, you know, I, I never knew. Wow. <laughs> well, I mean, look, bro, I support you or whatever. <laughs> I know, I'm like, Trey, I'm like, oh. It'll come in time. Well, after having that new piece of information, Trey advises Gabe not to tell Isabel's parents and just ask to marry her. That's it. No, that's gonna be too much. Yeah, let's stick with the marriage thing. Oh, I don't know. We'll go a couple of years down the line. I just wanna rip the Band-Aid off. I mean, bro, this is a real patriarchal culture. I mean, they don't play out here, you know? Real machismo. I mean, it's one of those type of cultures, bro. So, like, I don't know how her dad is gonna handle this. I do have concerns for him, you know, to move to another country, being in a culture that he's not really so familiar with, and to reveal that you are trans. It's a lot, it's a lot to process. Yeah, Trey just put things into perspective, for sure. At the end of the episode, we get a tease of what's still to come this season, and we get a sneak peek at the moment Gabe decides to tell Isabel's parents his truth. I was born a woman and I am trans. No quisiera decidir entre mi familia y Gabe. Oof, I cannot wait to see that. All right, 90 Day Fans fam, thank you for spending some time with me. Make sure you stick with ET because we are covering it all. I will see you next time.